So should lying online about who you really are become a criminal offence? Private investigator Rebecca Jane, who you saw in that film, joins us now. Um, Rebecca, this is something you feel really passionately about. Tell us uh, how far you've got with trying to make this a criminal offence and have you in fact got anywhere? Well, that's the problem is we haven't particularly got anywhere as such. Um, what we do have is we have um, an MP's back in Anne Coffey from Stockport who has been absolutely fantastic because no legal enforcement can actually help us because technically there's a lot of grey areas but it's not actually illegal to pose as somebody else online and steal somebody's identity. I think that the problem with this is is that people seem to think that, the, that nobody really gets hurt in this but this is not a victimless crime. I mean, you, you saw... Matt's story there. Um, it could have caused problems within his marriage. Luckily, him and Rachel are really strong. For me, the most haunting bit was the, the, was the thought that someone could end up doing harm to themselves because they've been taken in by someone who they thought was somebody else. Absolutely. There's two victims to all of this. Yeah. And people, you know, our lives are online these days. You know, we do date online and we come across fake profiles all the time and we just go, oh, it's another fake profile. But we shouldn't be accepting it because it's like I said, there's two victims. There's the person who's had their identity stolen and then there's the person who has been conned, manipulated and basically whatever else. I mean, you, you can imagine, can't you, that, that the police must get thousands and thousands yeah. of cases like this. And, I mean, they, they, the statistics on them actually managing to investigate and prosecute burglaries where someone's actually in your house are are really low because they're so swamped by work. And the, the issue here, isn't it, isn't it really, is that legislation, you're, you've got, you're dealing with legislation that was sort of forged mm. decades ago before yeah, okay, social yeah. media, and, yeah. it, and it can't keep up with yeah. the sort of rampant forces of, of the internet. So maybe how about, have you been looking at maybe putting pressure on the internet companies yes. to sort of do some sort of verification procedure to prove that you are who you are before you put a profile up absolutely. online. Yeah, absolutely. And what do they say? Well, that's the problem, is we can't particularly be listened to right now because it is such a huge problem that we need the law to change in order to get them to pay attention to us. Right. And it's just, it's a really vicious circle, but if we don't do something about it now, what is the future for our children? Yeah. And what, what, sorry, um, what, what kind of impact has this had on, on people who are out there from both sides? You're talking about the two different victims. Because you're a private investigator. Do you have people coming to you saying, my identity has been stolen, like, like Matt did? Mm -hmm. Or do you have people coming to you saying, I think I've been dealing with one person and I've actually been dealing with somebody else? Absolutely. And we've been dealing with the victims for many years. You know, we're in our eighth year now, and so we've been dealing with those for a long time. But now it's a lot more people who are actually finding out that they're having their identity stolen. Okay. Um, but the victims as such, yeah, you know, who is actually who they say they are online dating anymore? And people and might... Does it really affect people? Does it really affect oh, marriages, well, relationships? Oh, goodness, yeah. I mean, the whole situation with Matt, I'm pointing at Matt because he's still there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but obviously there's, there's his whole situation. But then there's Kirsty and what you've just heard from her. And, you know, I was just watching that almost in tears again because... Mm. It's a really difficult... It takes a lot to emotionally shake me, yeah. you know. I've spent a good eight years in this industry, and mm. both myself and Matt, when we heard Kirsty's statement and when we had to read it to the catfish, we were both in tears. Mm. And it's... You think that it's a victimless crime, but it's not. And the point is, it will happen to people in this audience at some point in time. And that's why we have to have the law changed in mm. order to prevent that for the future. And, and, and again, it comes back in a way, doesn't it? That the law itself... So if, say, for example, a catfish stole money from somebody, the law then goes, right, oh, that's yeah. a criminal offence, we'll get them. Yeah. But emotional sort of distress, distress or, is yeah. not treated in the same way, is yeah. it? No, and like what Matt said in the VT, the police said to us, you know, essentially, this is like claiming to be a millionaire and you're not. But no, if I go into a bar and I say that, that's me. I'm not stealing somebody else's you're not identity. Else, no. are you? You're not hurting no. anyone else. But absolutely. We both left that point in time thinking, yes, this is all over. Matt, obviously, on the way down there, I mean, we travelled six hours to, to confront the guy. And he, um, you know, on the way down there, he was very frustrated. He's been going on for years. and. But by the end of it, he said he shook his hand and he said, I hope you get the help that you need. Not many other people would have done that. No. no. And I was yeah. so happy. <laughs> and so the point is, is that 
it just has to change because four days later, during the confrontation, he actually gave me his phone mm -hmm. and I was allowed to look through and see how many women he'd been talking to at that point in time and there was over 30 at that point in time and it's been going on for years. I had to then contact them the next day and say, I'm really sorry, but, you know, the person who you think you've and been you, talking you to isn't real. you are playing with people's lives. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Well, difficult vulnerable. for you guys because luckily your wife completely trusted you because she had loads of people saying to her, didn't she, your husband yeah. is yeah. online looking for women. She all the time and uh, yeah. luckily whenever she got them or whenever I got them because I was getting them off girls and uh, we just we showed each other straight away but it, it literally could have gone either way. So. Yeah. Which is, which it's, is it's, it's very dangerous, yeah. Yeah. Um, as well, we need to bear in mind that, you know, you, you might think, well, hang on a minute, you haven't actually met this person, how can you fall in love? In, in t dating now is so different to, mm. to how it used to be, and speaking to someone online or on the phone, as this mm. guy Chris did, um, is how many relationships start, and that can go on for quite a long time before people meet, so it's, it's incredibly likely that you can form feelings and relationships with yeah. someone uh, before actually meeting them.